Fine, that's great, thanks. <laughs> Alright, let's get started, cool. Uh, my name is Jordan Finley, my student number is 140161, and this is Rumbler Jack, my game concept. Shit. <laughs> okay, so basically the overview of it is the game revolves around Jack. He's a lumberjack whose world has become plagued by a curse that has possessed the trees and brought life to stone in the world and made them hostile. Jack must battle his way through legions of relentless enemies to find and kill the arch tree, the form of a mysterious evil sorcerer. His death would undo the curse. The characters and enemies are unforgivably fast paced, creating a juicy hack and slash that flows organically in an open world. It's Devil May Cry meets Dark Souls, but it's like sped up and there's a lot of trees, like a lot. Uh, it adopts third-person perspective from these games, like camera spec uh, perspective, uh, but also has dungeon caller camera elements, like depending on the area. And it's aimed at a general population of hardcore gamers ranging in age from young adult upwards. All you need to enjoy it is a fairly powerful PC or any seventh generation plus console. Yeah. Uh, the whole game's basically made up of these eight main areas. Yeah, eight. Uh, they all have different, like, unique properties or whatever, but there's kind of a story that goes along with them and it, it gets more chaotic as it goes on. So starting with the old forest, it's basically the tutorial level. It's a pretty ordinary forest, nothing too hectic besides like living trees and stuff. Uh, it establishes the basic movement, combat, everything like that, You are everything you need to know, basics done, cool. And has a really basic boss that should be pretty easy and then progresses to the tropical jungle. The tropical jungle looks all beautiful and lush and stuff, but it's like an illusion to like, kind of sway people not, to not go further because there's like nothing dodge happening kind of thing. Uh, there's three mini bosses, and then uh, only once all three have been defeated, then the path to the last one opens, because uh, the main boss opens up the area, the next area, the snowy area, whatever. But with this specific boss, it's the only one in the game. You, there's an optional return. If you come back, any elements that you've acquired, which I'll discuss a bit later as well, throughout the game, will the boss will mimic it, but you can get a different, like a special item from defeating him for the second time. Uh, in the snowstorm area, like it's kind of a puzzly sort of thing, because the blizzard and uh, it impairs your movement and your vision throughout the entire thing. Well, like it's ir at irregular, irregular intervals, sorry, yeah. And then once you kill the final boss of that, he uses a lot of like snowy abilities and stuff, then you get, you unlock the ice skill tree, which is your first elemental thing that helps you throughout the game. Uh, I'll discuss that more as well. The mountain chase is like the path up to the cloudburst wildwood, which it's like, a, literally it's just going up the mountain, but it's really, really hardcore because every time you fall down a trap or like fall in general, you don't die, you just get all the way to the bottom, but the difficulty increases by like a, a really small percentage. So it kind of forces you to take like to pay really super extra attention kind of thing. Yeah. And the it's the first multi boss, well the only multi boss. It's not just one boss, it's a couple. But if you kill one and die, that one will remain dead. But it's all in one area and all at the same time kind of thing. And killing them unlocks the earth skill tree. Uh Cloudburst Wildwood, uh every, every, it's like pretty straightforward too, but there's like um fog that goes around and if you walk through it it can teleport you to certain areas that like kind of disorient you because uh, there's no map or anything like that. And killing the boss of this one gives you a golem catalyst which means you can summon and uh, control golems that help you out throughout the game, kind of like little minions or pets or whatever. And killing the boss also unlocks the AO spirit skill tree. Uh, the disease backwards, the wall of silence is basically a bunch of trees that don't move or anything but uh, it's kind of random. Every playthrough different, uh, different trees will come back to life or whatever. Uh, having different abilities depending, well, I don't know, it's random, yeah. Uh, so it changes through every play playthrough, and they have poison effects, so your damage, uh, your health can go down over time. Uh, the infection skill tree is basically poison, yeah, and you get that from killing the last boss. Flaming Woods, uh, everything is on fire, literally everything, most of the time you're taking damage constantly. It's not heavy damage, but it's something. But when you are uh, lit on fire by the enemies, because the, the enemies also use flame abilities, then uh, you get a damage boost and a speed boost, but your health goes down a lot faster because of rage and panic and stuff like that. Uh, and you have to kill stormcasters that are like basically creating this giant fire wall that you can't go past until you kill all of them. Yeah, and then you get the fire skill tree. And then the Enchanted Grove is the last place. That's why, like, basically it's just awesome, cool magic, and it infuses everything together. Uh, it has some enemies that seem immortal that can only die through poison, so it's a waste of time to do anything else with them. And yeah, that's where the final boss is, which I'll also discuss later. Uh, stylistically and like mechanically, uh, the three main games that I took influence from was Dark Souls, Devil May Cry, and Clash of Clans. Dark Souls, for its difficulty, it won't be as difficult, but it'll have like a similar feel to it and its mood because it's got a dark, like, effed up kind of mood. Uh, and the gameplay mechanics, it's very, very, very similar, just a lot faster. And the economy, the soul system, I've also used that a lot. Devil May Cry I used for its speed because Dark Souls is really slow and clunky and Devil May Cry is like fast and awesome. Uh, and it's hack and slash, so yeah. And it's got like a general dark humor and badassness that 
it just draws players to it. Like even if you don't enjoy the storyline or anything like that, it's it's fun to play. Clash Clans are used for the exaggerated figures and stuff. It won't be like those these small little characters, but similar in style and the color as well, especially the color. Very highly saturated and stuff, but there'll be heavy contrast and mood differences and stuff throughout the game depending on the area. Uh, yeah, mechanics and physics. The element system. There are six. Yeah, different element types, and each of them have different abilities or different uses. So Frost slows movement and has a chance of freezing the enemy for a couple seconds. Earth can stun an enemy, and they have like really, really effective damage, but they're slow. And you can use them for defense buffs for your character. The air or spirit element types uh, are all just dispelling and healing. It's all positive stuff for you. You can't really do any damage with it. Poison is damage, damage over time, and it ignores armor. And fire is heavy damage over time, and it's all area of effects. So like you can't just have a single target and if, like attack him. It'll affect every enemy in the area. Okay, and ignores armor too, has a small chance to instantly kill less enemies, heavy damage and all AV. It's super badass, but it's an end game skill, so you don't you really get to use it for very long unless you replay. Um, some enemies are completely immune to status effects, so you're going to have to either rely on brute force or a specific weakness that they may have. The evade system is also taken directly, or well, similar t uh, to Dark Souls, where every cycle of evasion uh, takes up some of your stamina. Because the stamina bar, I'll also get to later, but yeah. Uh, it can be upgraded and blah, 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 but every cycle of evasion takes up stamina, so you can't just keep doing it and never get hit kind of thing. Uh, and it has similar to real-world gravity as you fall, you die, or if it's from a really high area, and if you walk through water, it'll slow you down, etc. Okay, Jack. <sighs> Jack is a lone lumberjack. He was an ordinary guy. Okay, to summarize, because that is very long. Uh, he basically grew up on a farmland, everything was super chill, and then uh, he went on hiatus from like just life. He wanted to go on like a little pilgrimage kind of vibe. And when he got back, uh, everything was just messed up from this evil sorcerer dude. Yeah. Uh, he looks pretty much like a typical lumberjack. The one on the left, the image on the left, is uh, a quick one I did a while ago, but I don't like, it's too proportionate and looks too like legit. I want it to look more like the guy on the right, where it's, it shows strength and stuff. The other one's boring, and yeah. Uh, stats. Stat system is very similar to Dark Souls, but in Dark Souls, like, it didn't have much of an impact. You didn't really feel it unless you really heavily invested in one stat kind of thing. So you, you get an instant gratification from upgrading any of these stats. So health, stamina, vitality. Like, it's all very typical of any RPG. Yeah. Uh, wep weapons are also typical of any RPG. They all have varying stats, but rarity classes determine how high or low the stats are. Skills, I uh, reference Skill Doors 2, because I think that's an awesome skill system where you have an active skill. So you'll, uh, for example, if you're doing like water elements at the time, you'll have all your water skills laid in one skill bar. And then you can combo and then change it, quickly change to a different skill bar that has all your fire elements and etc. Yeah. Economy. The soul system from Dark Souls is like the, one of my favorite economy systems ever. Uh, yeah, so basically any tree that you kill, the possessed soul from that tree you, you obtain and you can use it to get items and things like that from the uh, NPC. And the boss souls are similar as well. You can use them to get special items and special weapons and stuff. But you can't sell them, you can only trade them. Uh, the Possessed Sphinx is a dude whose soul is trapped inside this wooden sphinx thing, and he's actually the father of the, the sorcery dude. So he's like, he's trying to help you out to kill him, because he, he kind of, he feels responsible for everything that's happened, yeah. And he acts as the bandit. Okay, multiplayer. Similar to Dark Souls, yet again. But uh, instead of phantoms, it's actually the soul of the player, well, another jack from a parallel universe that's inheriting, or not inheriting, it's uh, possessing a tree. So you're basically finding long trees that have all the abilities that that player would have, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and each time you add, because it it there's not really a limit on how many players you can add to your game, maybe like, obviously it, it would get ridiculous if it was too high, but uh, every time another player enters your game, the difficulty goes up by quite a lot, uh, just to make it a bit more challenging and interesting, there's a reason to, uh, yeah, because otherwise it would just be a blow if everyone could just play together and then rape through the whole game. Okay, combat. It's basically faster Dark Souls, which equals Devil May Cry, I guess. Um, yeah, every sprint and block and uh, dodge uh, costs stamina, as well as the idea of poise, which is guard break. So uh, each enemy will have a set amount of poise, and if, you, if they block long enough, eventually you'll break their limit, and then they'll be stunned. Yeah. Uh, but some of the rarer or stronger enemies will have random assigned, like randomly assigned characteristics. So, for example, an elite enemy among a swarm of less enemies that has no guard break limit and can't be stunned, but it'll also have like a random element. So, yeah, it might have a fire ability or something just out of the blue. It's random every time. Uh, weapons can also be upgraded with elemental abilities to, depending on what area you're in. So if you're in like the fire uh, woods, then you'll have like a snow weapon would work really effectively or something like that. Yeah. 
Uh, the fuel thing, yeah, that's with uh, uh, a chainsaw. There's a chainsaw, like it's a really rare weapon, but if you get it, it doesn't expend stamina. stamina it in, yeah. Rather uses fuel, but fuel is quite a rare commodity as well, so it's only used in like dire situations. Uh, these trees are examples from RuneScape that I just messed around with a bit, because I really, really dig that style. It's like pretty much exactly what I had in mind before I even knew they existed. Uh, but yeah, the top one is basic mob. No, everything's just simple, low damage, low health, everything. But they come in like really, really large quantities at the same time. And then below it is a, an example of an elemental type of the same tree or the same tier. Uh, it's, all, it's got poison abilities, but they don't come in swarms. There'll be a swarm of regular enemies and then just one of them. But it could be poison or fire or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, bosses. There's a boss at the end of every level. They're not all super like complex or anything. Some of them are quite basic, especially in the beginning. But uh, the, their abilities depend on their environments and the elements in those environments. So, for example, the Swarm King, he doesn't move. He only attacks with big-ass branches, but he summons a lot of swarms to come down at the same time of these uh, tree enemies. Yeah. And when you return, because that's the return boss, if you go back to him, those enemies have a chance to have a different elemental effect every time. And the final boss, it's first the tree, and then you actually find the wizard in his final form, like, yeah, well, his true form, human form. And this is an example of the interface that I would use, because it's really simple and awesome. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I don't know how to pause it. I'll stop it. There.